Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I have something a little bit different to tell you about today, and it's not a sponsorship. <laughs> so, um, today is actually my birthday, as well as Creeps McPasta's birthday, and our editor, Matt, uh, who you've seen me live stream here before. We all share the same birthday, surprisingly, even though we're not the same person. However, for the past couple of years, I've always done an MCP horror reboot, which is taking a whole bunch of stories that I have done previously in the year and trying to reboot them to be done better. But since going daily with videos, that's become really difficult to try to peg out and also still keep up to date with all my other videos. There's a lot going on all the time now. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different. What you're about to hear is a shorter video, but this is the second video I've ever done on the channel. And I mean ever. If you take a look in the little top right hand corner, there's that little eye you can click on or tap on. And that'll take you over to listen to the original recording. So you can tell if I've grown, changed, or become better or worse. Here's hoping it's for the better. All right, guys. On to tonight's story. So I'll tell you right now that my story doesn't have any dramatic climax or any cathartic resolution. So don't bother listening to this if that's what you're looking for. My story is... is of one very specific moment in my life. One which, try as I might, I can't negate as a trick that my exhausted brain played on me, or or a momentary lapse of reason and subsequent plunge into childish fears. I think, I think a fear of mirrors must be fairly common you know, in, in this day and age. I remember when I was young, I saw one of those compilation TV horror shows, and it was one where there'd be a different story short scary story between commercial breaks and in retrospect it wasn't the scariest thing in the world if i saw it again today i'd probably invite friends over and we could we'd quash our collective fears by by mocking the bad acting or the the ridiculous storyline all i remember of it is that in the story a man was being constantly tormented by a disfigured murderous psychopath but he only saw him when he looked in the mirror the whole story was a typical song and dance of the man catching his stalker in the mirror behind him, turning to face him and finding nothing there. And maybe the reason I remember it so well is because well, it was so shortly after I heard my mother die. I, I say heard because I never saw the body. I was watching TV, it was a different show at the time, but when I heard, I heard what sounded like porcelain breaking, followed by a loud thud coming from the kitchen two rooms away. The sudden noise was oddly unsurprising, but I remember, um, I remember craning my head to see my mom's legs sprawled on the towel floor. Couldn't see any more of her. The door frame was in the way. And luckily, I suppose, um, my father ran in first, calling her name, somewhat frantically, as I stood up, but didn't advance out of what I imagined was fear. I remember. Him telling me, he told me to stay where I was. Well, the doctors told us a virus had gotten into her heart. I remember my father, he protested that he hadn't even heard of that before. And neither had I. But the concept of death itself was fairly new to me. See, I, I remember being filled with an overwhelming sense of existential fear. As if I or anyone I knew could suddenly just, just crumble into a pile of lifeless dust at any moment. I don't think I was a very fearful child, though. N not more so than most. And, and even my unease around mirrors didn't exactly trump my other fears of spiders or being in cramped spaces. Like, it, it makes sense that mirrors are a source of fear for people. One of the defining signs of self-awareness is whether or not an animal recognizes itself in the mirror. Maybe... Maybe we still retain some primal belief that what we're seeing really isn't us. It's some sinister shadow self. I mean, not to mention all the scenes in horror movies that use them. A, a character bends down to splash water in their face when they lift their head back up, their face is distorted in some gruesome way. I just gotten home from a party at a nearby frat house. Uh, I lived in an old Victorian house that 
four of my friends from school and I, we all rented. And I was the only one home. I left the party early. Being called two in the morning early. And my roommates, they were all still out. I ran upstairs to my room, exhausted, wanting nothing more than to lay my head in my bed, feel the rest of the world leave me behind, but I didn't. In rare form, I decided to take a few more steps down the hall to the old, poorly designed bathroom the two of my roommates shared with me. It was lit by a single fluorescent bulb, casting the black and white tile in a sickly, near-green color. I ran a thin strip of toothpaste on my brush and gave my teeth a once-over before spitting the slightly brown spit and foam down the sink. And when I looked back up, I saw her, standing behind me, in the bathtub with the curtain drawn wide open, my mother's mouth hung down as if screaming but without any sound. I could tell, I could tell it was my mother, but she, she was a grotesque shadow of how I remember her. Her eyes were either completely gone or simply black in color. The sockets were vacuums within, within which nothing reached. Her skull was so pale it was almost blue. Her dark hair looked drenched in water hugging her scalp tight and falling in front of her shoulders in thin strips. Her mouth wasn't exactly screaming, it was so much as it was hanging open, impossibly open, much further than a person's jaw could extend. She seemed to be wearing a thin, a thin, a thin white nightgown, drenched, like her hair clinging to her emaciated body. Her stick-thin legs looked like they were going to buckle under her weight, while her arms reached back against the wall. I must have seen her for only a second before turning, screaming, falling down backwards, slamming hard against the tile floor. The tub was empty. There had been no sound, and now as the echoes of my cry dissipated, I could only hear my heavy breathing. I don't know how long I lay on the floor of the bathroom, the fluorescent bulb dully buzzing as I became too frightened to even move. Eventually, I heard the downstairs door swing open, as a parade of drunk college boys and their floozies poured in for them. They found me only... They found me on the floor. I thought it was hilarious that I was so drunk I almost passed out in the bathroom. I, uh... I never saw her again. I never want to see her again, and every day I wish I hadn't. There's, there's myths of people being scared to death, being haunted by dreams of, of a single event for their whole lives. I, I had, I've had dreams, you know? But they aren't what haunts me to this very day. So when someone you love dies, you tend to forget everything bad about them. And eventually your fond memories of them just coalesce into a fondness you share with everyone else that knew them, but that's not how I feel about my mother. I was too young to have endless loving stories about her, and instead, instead, all I can remember is her face that night in the mirror. So my story doesn't end with me taking my own life or anything dramatic like that. I, I mean, I've had thoughts about it, though. I tried pulling a length of rope across my neck one day and squeezing to see what it would feel like, but I, I never, I'd never be able to go through with it. It isn't so much that I want to live, what bothers me is that I don't know for sure what happens when we die. I mean, nobody does. But what I saw that night in the mirror. Makes me think I do. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So. All the best to all of you who are still working, 
and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either canceled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and Google, and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Center, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hassanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>